Point number one today is the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. First, there was only God, and then God created. This is what Christians believe, and whether we accept it or whether we accept a Big Bang theory does not change the fact that there was nothing and then there was something. The only difference would be the stupidity of believing that the universe could create itself. The reason why is because if the universe created itself, it would have had to have existed before it existed. A logical contradiction. So such is the depravity of man that we have to reduce ourselves in our scientific disciplines to something that stupid in order to get away from God. The Genesis account does not tell us how God created. The Psalms do, but the Genesis account doesn't. It simply gives us the account and it tells us the order in which these things took place. The creation account is only 31 verses long and yet it has been the subject of untold hours of thought countless books, and it has been divided into an amazing number of theories. Some people believe that this account is to be taken literal, as six literal days, 24-hour period days. Some people say that each day represents a time of billions and billions of years, which are representative of six epochs of God's creation. And some people say that the earth was first inhabited and then was destroyed before man was created. This particular theory is known as what's called the gap theory, and it inserts, believe it or not, an entire period of Satan's rule between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. The idea is obviously not biblical, but it came about as a knee-jerk reaction to Darwin's theory of evolution. And all of a sudden, people started panicking, thinking we've got to somehow uh, justify why the Bible doesn't include all the things that have never come to pass anyway. The list of theories in addition to the cap theory is long and it is often very convoluted but in the end the bible really only presents one option even the honest non-believer when they pick up the bible will agree that god intends for us to believe that this is a literal six day period james barr who is the oriel professor of the interpretation of holy scripture at oxford university says this about the account Probably, so far as I know, there is no professor of Hebrew or Old Testament at any world-class university who does not believe that the writer of Genesis 1 intended to convey to the readers the idea that creation took place in a series of six days, which were the same as the days, 24 hours, which we now experience. 